Hi everybody! If you want to purge your unused view filters in Revit, then you're in the right place. In this video, first of all, we're going to go to Revit and have a look inside of EFTools extension. In there, I've just added purge view filter tool, which can be used by anyone absolutely for free. And second of all, we're going to go and have a look inside of this tool. In there, we're going to write the Python code together step by step. So not only you know how it works, but also you can adjust it to your own needs. And if you want to see similar videos for other purging tools for Revit, let me know in the comments which tool you want to see next. And now let's go to Revit and actually have a look. I'm going to use this golden nugget sample project from Autodesk. And if I'm going to go to EFTools, right here in the maintenance tab, you will see the purge pull-down menu. In the moment it's just purge used view filters and it's just going to give you the menu of all your unused view filters. If your view filters are not going to be used by any view or view templates, they're not going to be shown in this menu. So you can feel safe about that. In here, you can select all the view filters or maybe just a few of them and then click on delete view filters. Then I'm going to see this output and it's going to write all the view filters that were deleted. And now, if I'm going to try to use it again, this time I can only see one view filter. This is how it works. But also, I'm going to go back before I deleted any view filters, because now we're going to write this code together from start. And for that, I prepared the button in my EF Tutor extension right here, purged and used view filters. If I'm going to open the code, there is nothing inside really. There's some information about the title and description of the button. We have our regular imports from Autodesk Revit DB and PyRevit forms. And obviously, we need our document and UI document. That's all we have right now. And now we're going to go and write all the steps. And for the first step, we need to get all our views in the project and also filters. Let's start with the filters and then we're going to go to the views. To get all of that, it's not that complicated. You just need to know how to use filtered element collector class. I also have a free guide if you need it, but it's not that complicated. We just have to create filtered element collector, provide a document which represents our project. And then we want to say we want to filter elements by the class. We're going to come back to this in a moment. And after that, we'll have an option to get elements or element IDs. In my case, I want to get my element IDs. Now, first of all, because we're getting element IDs, let's rename here all filter IDs. I'm also going to duplicate it a few times because in here it's going to be our parameter filters and also our selection filters. Then in here, we're just going to have our parameter filters. And then in here, we're going to have our selection filters. And now to do that, we just need to find the right classes. So the first one is very easy. It's going to be our filter element. This is the parent class for both of them. So it's going to get both the parameters and selection filters. For the second one, I want to get my parameter filter element. And then for the third one, it's going to be selection filter element. And these two classes are based on that one, because this is the parent class, this is the, the children classes. All right, we got our filters. In this lesson, we won't really need all the parameter and selection classes together. So we're going to comment it out. And also, I don't really want to work with selection filters in this lesson. I only want to focus on the parameter filters for this tool. So we're just going to leave this line. And now we also need to get all our views and view templates. And for that, we're also going to use filtered element collector. We need to provide the document where we're getting it from. This time I want to use off category. I'm going to provide built-in category of views. And this is going to get all the views in the project. Now, let's make sure that where element is not element type, so we only get instances and not the view types. I'm gonna convert it to elements. Now, pay attention that in here, you're gonna get both of your views and view templates. If you would want to separate it, you could do that by using view is template property. And you could check if, if this is true, then it's a view template. If it's false, then it's not. But we're not gonna do this because we want both of them. All right, and now we have our views and filters. So. Now, in the second step, we want to find all the used view filters, and it's not that complicated. I'm just going to iterate through all the views and view templates, and inside of each, I'm going to try to get view filters applied to them. Then I'm going to have a look at the names of these view filters, or maybe IDs. I'm going to put all the used one in one list, and then we're going to find the difference between all filters and used filters. And this is how we're going to find all unused filters. Now, let's do that. So first of all, we're going to write views filter IDs equals and it's going to be a list of elements now for view in all views and view templates now we need to get the filters it's not that complicated because we can get view filters by using view get filters and if you're going to have a look at this method you will realize that it returns you a list of element ids so let's rename it to ids as well 
Now, we get a list of your element IDs, now we need to iterate for them. For view filter ID, in view filter IDs, and it's very simply, we're just gonna write if view filter ID not in used filter IDs, then we're gonna add it. I'm just gonna write used filter IDs, append, and we're gonna write here view filter ID. This is an easy way to create a list of unique items by just checking if it's already inside, and if it's not, then we add it. We could also use the set, but personally, I prefer to use list right here, and we're gonna use the set in the next step. Because in the next step, we need to find all the unused view filters. So for that, let's put it here, get unused view filters, and it's very simple. I'm just gonna write unused filter IDs equals, I we need to take our set A minus set B. Because when we work with sets, we can find the differences by using the subtraction and some other symbols. Now, set A is gonna be all view filters. In this case, all parameter filter IDs. In set B, it's gonna be all the used filter IDs. And now it's gonna find the difference between these two sets. Now, since we focus on deleting only unused view filters, let's also convert them to the actual elements. I'm gonna use list comprehension. I'm gonna write dog get element filter ID for filter ID in unused filter IDs. This is gonna get us a list of all the filters so we can actually look inside of them, see their names and so on. Now, this one is okay. Let me also zoom in. Now, before we're gonna go any further, we might wanna create a check to see if these filters even exist in the project. Sometimes maybe you don't have any unused filters, then it doesn't make sense to go any further. So we're gonna check if unused filters are in the project. For that, we're just gonna write, if not unused filters, then we're gonna use forms alert from PyRevit. I'm gonna write, there are no unused view filters in the project. Please try again. And most importantly, I wanna use this exit script set to true. This way, it's gonna stop the execution, give us this kind of warning and say, hey, there is nothing to delete, so nothing to do here. Now, also we can make title equal to the title of the button, because right here I have the name, purge unused view filters. All right, so we made this kind of if statement check, now we can go further and it means that we have some unused filters in the project. And now I want to select view filters to delete. For that, we're also going to use PyRevit form, but this time we're going to use select from list because we want users to select which uh, view filters to delete because you never want to delete all of them at once. Sometimes you want to keep them a little bit longer. For that, we're just going to call it filters to delete. And we need to use forms select from list by PyRevit. I'm gonna hold Ctrl and click on Q. I'm gonna see this kind of help string where I can see an example how it works. If it doesn't work for you, it means that you haven't referenced your PyRevit library. My interpreter settings, really quick, just gonna go to show all. Here's my interpreter path. And if I'm gonna look at the interpreter paths, which I added additionally, you can see here's my custom library. Here's my Revit API tabs. And here is the PyRevit library from where we import these forms and therefore PyCharm can read inside of it. All right, so if you reference it correctly, when you hold Ctrl click on Q, you should see this kind of doc string. Click one more, it's gonna open on the sidebar. In here, I want you to focus on this example right here. We can just copy and paste it here. Now let's just align it correctly. And now we can break it down. We don't need the import because I already have it on the top. Now for the options, we have these unused filters, so we're gonna use it instead right here. Then for the multi-select, I definitely want to select it to be true. For the name attribute, we're going to use name. What it means is that when you iterate for your filters, it means that you can read the filter name. This is what's going to be shown to your users inside your list. So they can select based on the filter name. And lastly, a button name. Select and use view filters to delete. Now let's close this doc string. I can take this variable name and assign it here. And don't need that one. So this is supposed to select us all the view filters which we're trying to delete. Now, we made quite a lot of steps already. Let's print and see if we get any errors anywhere. I'm just gonna write for filter in filter to delete. We're just gonna try to print its name. And on the top, we're gonna print the title saying delete view filters. All right, I'm gonna go to Revit and click on this button and see if I get any errors. Maybe I misspelled something. 
but I don't think so because I can see this menu. Inside there is a list of all the view filters which we can delete. It means that none of them are used in any views or any view templates. Now let's maybe select all of them, click and see what we get. I'll get delete view filters and the name of all of these filters. So we already have nearly the whole script working, we just need to delete these elements. But also keep in mind that right now, if you're gonna click on this purge and use view filters, and you're not gonna select anything here, or maybe you just cancel it, you're not gonna get any elements. So we can also make sure to stop execution if nothing was selected. Let's go back to the code. And now we're gonna check selection. We're gonna write if not filters to delete, then it means that user hasn't selected enough view filters. Just gonna copy this forms alert. And this time we're gonna write no unused view filters were selected. Please try again. And now we are ready to delete. It's actually very easy to delete elements with Revit API. You just need an element ID and a document where you wanna delete them. Then we're gonna write document, delete, and then we're gonna write here filter ID. But for that, we need to iterate for filter in filters to delete. And filter ID would be filter ID. I don't really want this repetition, so I'm just gonna paste it here. Now, since we are trying to make changes to Revit project, we need to use transaction. This is the class that makes possible to make any changes in Revit projects. There are different ways to use it this time. Let's use it as context manager. I'm gonna write with transaction, we need to provide document and the name of the change, which you can see in the undo menu afterwards. I'm gonna write purge unused view filters. Since we're using this syntax, we need to write here as T to assign it to a variable. And then we need to start and commit it. Now let's move this whole thing between these statements because changes only allowed if they are between the start and commit statements. And also if you're gonna get any errors between them, just gonna cancel it, so don't worry as well. Let's also add these comments. We unlock and we lock right here. Now, you never know what's gonna happen. Maybe somebody owns the element or something. So it's not a bad idea to use a try and accept statements here as well. In the except, we're gonna write exception as E so we can actually get the error message. And in this except statement, we're gonna write couldn't delete view filters and then provide view filter name. And also we're gonna write here print error message. I'm gonna provide this E because this is gonna be the error message that we get. Now in here, we need to provide our filtered name. First of all, we need to get it. So in here in the try statement, we're gonna use this variable. I'm gonna use filter name to assign it to the variable. And once it's deleted, we're also gonna make a print statement. And in here, we're gonna write a deleted view filter and then provide this filter name. The reason that we need to assign it to a variable because if you're gonna delete your filter, then you won't be able to get its name because it's already deleted from the database and you're gonna get some error. Now let's add a few emojis. For emojis, just hold this kind of start button and click on the dot. Then it's gonna get this menu and you can look for your emojis. All right, and I think that we actually have everything that we need. We know how to get our elements. We know how to ask user to select it. And lastly, I showed you how to delete it. Also added try and accept and print statements. That's why it's kind of a bit messier but overall it should work quite fine. Let's go to Revit, click on purge and use view filters. And now we can see, we get this menu. Let's select all of them except for maybe this beton balkan. Then I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna get a list of all deleted view filters because if it wouldn't be deleted, then it's gonna be an error and in accept statement, it would write, couldn't delete it, here's the error message. And now if I'm gonna click on it again, you'll notice that I can only select one view filter this time because all the others were completely deleted. So this is how we can purge view filters from Revit by using Revit API and PyRevit. Overall, as you saw, it's not that complicated. There are just a few steps that you need to follow and it's actually very, very simple once you know the basics. And if you don't know the basics, I highly recommend you to get this beginner's guide to Revit API ebook, which I wrote and made it completely free. I hope you're gonna like it and I'm gonna see you in the next videos. And huge thanks to all my supporters. Happy coding everyone, goodbye.